This Texilla Maker Fair coverage is powered by Toyota. Let's go places. So let's say you want a 3D printer. 500, we can do that. 400, we can do that. 300, well, this man can do that. Brook Drum, hey, you, you basically, you go from a web designer, a guy doing things in podcasting, and suddenly you're an entrepreneur, and suddenly your $25,000 bid on Kickstarter goes to $800,000. What happened? Dude, I'd like to know, right? It's been a whirlwind, but that's exactly it. Put up a, a $25,000 Kickstarter and boom, 830,000. So it's kind of at the nexus and the right timing between being a maker and the maker community growing, like you can see here, Three, the interest in 3D printing, and Kickstarter crowdfunding, it all kind of converged on me and I got struck by lightning. Lightning is a good thing in this case. So what we're looking at here, how do you actually create a printer for $300? Because it works. Everything you need is in the box. That's right. So you, you do have to strip out a little bit of functionality. So no heated bed. You can't do ABS, PLA, so polylactic acid. It's like a biodegradable corn-based material. Okay. So you stick with that. We took out end stops, the open source software that we use. This is all open source. Open source firmware, electronics, hardware, and the software. So we stripped out the end stops because the software got a little better and the software we use doesn't require it. So you try to remove as much as you can, the least amount of material possible so it did shrink down really small. Three and a half by three and a half by three and a half inches cubed. So when we're looking at this, I noticed like there's no belts. I think you said it was Kevlar fishing line? Yeah, check us out, so on the side, you know, belts do have a tendency to stretch sometimes, but Kevlar 200 pound test fishing line doesn't stretch. I can hang from it, right? And it doesn't stretch. So it's pretty interesting. Even, guys have even removed the vinyl tube and gone right down to the bare metal with this. So it's kind of new and some people think that doesn't work, but it prints. It works. So you, what's the, what kind of resolution are we talking about with this and how big an object can it print? Right. So. I don't know, Rubik's Cube is about the size, right? Three and a half inches by three and a half inches. So the resolution is up to you, but you can go all the way down to 0.1 millimeter and beyond. So like 100 microns and beyond. But it's at that point, you, start, you stop seeing those lines of resolution that are kind of like ridges. It kind of gets a little smoother. And you can finish the part and it can be smooth as glass with a little acetone vapor. But yeah, it's really fun. So it's good resolution if you want it to be. I'm, I'm impatient. The, more, the higher the resolution, the longer you got to wait. So I usually do like a .3, and then it prints a little faster. So when you did the Kickstarter project, like you're, you're like, you're, I'm going to build 50 of these, I'm going to build 100 of these. You ended up building 1,400 for the Kickstarter project alone? We're up now a year and a half later. Um, we're, we've shipped almost 5,000. So, you know, you don't, back then, I didn't know what I was getting into, <laughs> you know? And if I would have known, it's almost like, man, I would have really thought long and hard, because so much work, right? But it, I mean, I'm the luckiest man in the world, just so glad to be doing this, but it is a lot of work and not fancy work, like hot shed, you know, hot shop, cutting with lasers, you know. When, when you started, you said like the, the process you were using, printing the, printing the new printers yeah. didn't scale. Yeah, so uh, everybody thought, oh cool, it's a rep wrap, which means replicating rapid prototypers. So they actually replicate, they print each other. You, one printer bot printed another one, and those two printed two others, and those four, print, and, and on and on. So I had up to 30 printer bots at one time. I had one 18-year-old kid running it at one point. He could get them all going at once, right? So uh, this bot farm would just print part after part after part, and there's some failure rate, you know, so I have boxes, hundreds of pounds of parts that I'm waiting to recycle because it, th there's some failure, it just takes so long. So you can't, you can't do large-scale manufacturing with 3D printers. They are really good at making one custom thing, you know, just for you, like with your name on it, but man, making a, a thousand things, really hard. We printed probably 20, 30,000 parts, took six months. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So what's your top of the line printer these days? So we have one right now that's called the PrinterBot Plus. It's eight by eight by eight uh, inches cubed. And it's just rock solid. It was one of my original designs, but it's in version two. And it's, it's just a dream to print with. We're also working on, just a couple weeks ago, we got an SLA or a, a DLP printer, like the Form Labs here. Um, we got ours working, we're doing one. And that's crazy, crazy resolution, really nice. So we're, we're continuing to push forward. We're doing a CNC machine, we're doing a laser cutter. We want to be tools for makers. And because we get bored easily, we're also going to do toys for makers. So we're going to use these machines just to do some toys, too. But we're having a blast. I'm down with the CNC mill. Brooke, thank you so much for making time for us. What's the website? Printerbot.com. No E. Printerbot. Printerbot.com. We can make that happen. Thanks, right. man. Thanks a lot, man. 
We want to thank Toyota and the 2013 RAV4 EV for bringing us to Maker Faire this week. Look, if you haven't seen it, this is cool. Unlike a lot of other EV vehicles, they actually understand that people like to carry things, like children, so you can seat multiple people. The seats fold so you can carry more gear and check it out. You want to carry all the dog food, they got that covered too. We got some storage in the back so you can hide gear when you're parking in maybe the nefarious parking lot over there by the mall. An electric vehicle that actually allows you to carry your groceries or your stuff for your next project home, this is awesome. 2013 RAV4 EV from Toyota. We want to thank them for bringing us to Maker Faire. And you know what, there's some amazing projects and some amazing technology in the EV. We'll tell you more about that later. Right now, let's go places.